off the land of the rest of it. They're base. Yeah, basically. Um, base cells. Finally, the Aldmer that remained on the Somerset Isles became the Altmer, or Elder Ones. They still covered the old way of life. That is the end of the Dawn era. All of, most of the races are in order. Um, things are set up. Any questions? Um, Where are my boys in the north at? Where are your boys in the north at? They become important, I want to say, during the first era, early on. Okay. Abby. Might be. Where are my boys in the rock at? Hammer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rock? Yeah, they are currently in another timeline right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where are my boys from the desert at? That, I thought that, that's what you were talking about. Oh, wait, I forgot the fucking, they're a Oh, you're talking, I guess you were talking about friends. They're, they're, yeah. they're coming. They're, they're coming? Yeah. Okay. And then the other ones are from the other timeline. Yeah. They're what? <laughs> so, now we are in the Morephic or Mythic era in the human time. Um, this, is, this is an era similar to like BC. Like we have recorded history, we have some recorded dates even from this era. But we don't have like uh, concrete knowledge. Like think of like when I'm talking about stuff in the Morephic era, when I'm talking about stuff in the Morephic era, like it to like Remus and Romulus and stories like that, like the, the Trojan War and stuff like that. Like it's stuff that we think maybe happened, but we don't have exact recorded dates for it. Uh, and that's what the Morephic era is. It's basically civilization is coming to be. Um, civilization is coming. So at the beginning of the Morephic era, Beast Folk kind of just happened. You know, I've already talked about the Argonians and the Khajiit. There are uh, more Beast Folk. There are the Ibga, which are like monkey people uh, who dwell in Valley Wood. There are the uh, Lumapet. Like winter? She and Inga? Yeah, because a monkey. <laughs> okay. There are the Romathets who are fox like people, and I think there's like. Elsewhere. Talking right now. There's bird people. There's there's basically just a bunch of different beast folk, which exist now. Yes. Various of Tamriel's towers are built or empowered during this era. You have Orichalc. I don't know where Orichalc is, so I can't find it on the map. We have Snowthroat, which is in Skyrim. Right Woo! We have a Green Sap, which is in Valleywood. It's a big ass tree. Um, and and uh, th these towers are similar to the Adamantine Tower, which I mentioned before. And Red Mountain is also considered another tower of Tamriel. Hmm. Um, it is said that when these towers all fall, and most of them have now, it is said when, when these towers fall, bad shit happens. <laughs> Um, so, Yakuda emerges to the west of Hammerfell. Yakuda used to be a big continent right here. We'll get to why it's not there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it emerges in the west of Hammerfell, and it brought the Yakudans with them, and their gods, and the Sinister Elves. So, what the fuck am I talking about right now? Basically, Here's how the Elder Scrolls work. There are timelines called Kolpas, and what's supposed to happen is Ariel creates shit, Akhtosh is shit, and then Alduin is shit and eats everything. So basically, Alduin was eating another Kolpa at this time. He was eating it, he was devouring the Lord, and all of the Yakudans were basically like, fuck this shit, we're out. So they transport their continent forward in time to the next Kolpa, and then this is where they end up. So they have like earth magic and other shit that nobody else can do because they come from another timeline. Uh, yeah. yeah, they also have hundreds of gods that come through with them. And those aren't the boys I speak of. Those are my boys from the stand. They eventually become red guards. Oh, yes. oh shit. Yes. Um, so the Yakudans wage war with the Sinistral Elves, which are also on uh, Yakuda. They're also called the left-handed elves. Um, they're completely unrelated to elves of today. Um, the, that, uh, the, the Hunding, which is a uh, Yakudan god, that manifests itself in times of need. It manifests itself as a Yakudan warrior, and it um, destroys the left-handed elves. And many Yakudans then migrate to Hammerfell, where they slay high elves that reminded them of their enemies. <laughs> and uh, those who stay in Hammerfell become red guards, um, essentially. Hammerfell is, by the way, it's like a big fucking desert, like right here. Oh yeah, my boys from the desert. Yes. An Altmer explorer named Topal the Pirate begins exploring Tamriel's sea lines, or sea lanes. 
first going north around the continent. So he starts at here, just sort of north around here, uh, sort of, and then it comes all the way back down here, accesses the uh, the river Niven, and then goes up here. And there's these eight islands in the center of the Niven Bay, and there are bird people there. And he basically claims those islands and kills the fucking bird people. <laughs> 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 My <laughs> yeah. Christopher Columbus. That, that is basically what Snow Paul is. Around this time, there are wizard towers being built. This is the this is the beginning of high Milwaukee culture in Red Thing. Which basically means St. Olaf is fucking cool and chill, and all of the Keimer who came with him, we're chilling out, we're smoking pot, we're worshiping Deidre, mm. we're having orgies, you know. And they uh, they built the towers of uh, up in here in uh, Red Thing, that's what it's called now. They built the towers of Balfell, Arbrisvena, Tel Arun, Tel Mora, uh, and Tel Mora. Um, ba basically, what all those words mean is they were just uh, important towers that later become cities in Morrowind. So they're kind of the first cities. Um, meanwhile, up in High Rock, remember Balthier? Remember where you know everyone got together and said fuck Lorcan? Um, the Altmer uh, researcher. Dorini Cygnus rediscovers the Adamantine Tower. And is oh. basically like, well, we're out, this is my place now. <laughs> and then he lives there. <laughs> well, this is mine. So, the Somerset Isles are becoming packed now, and many Altmer take up colonies in the center of Camrio through the route discovered by Topol. Uh, these become the first Aliads or Wild Elves, and they settle in what is now modern day Cyrodiil, which is basically the heartland or the center of Camrio. Which is a jungle right now. And those of you who have played Oblivion probably don't remember Cyrodiil being a jungle. We'll get to that later. <laughs> I bet Akavir got no problems like this. It's a jungle. Right no, because they haven't fucking touched Akavir in like two <laughs> games. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, those are the aliens. Uh, they remain subservient to the King of Alinor for now. This is Alinor, by the way. You see this little tiny island that's part of the Somerset Isles? That, that is Alamor, um, and that is the, basically the seat of uh, Altamira's government. Central Tamriel, which used to be a, a hub for the Beast Folk, is essentially, they, they're entirely driven back by the aliens. The Crystal Tower, one of the great towers of uh, Tamriel, is built on the Somerset Isles, specifically the Isle of Somerset, which is the fucking big one. Yes. Okay. I just have a question. How is this information coming from a game or something separate from this the game? This information, a lot of this comes from lore books, like Tor, Tor, Topol the Pilot. Oh, there are books. Okay, that. There are books in the games. That you okay. Read. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you can read books. Um, in the game. I, most of this stuff that I'm talking about right now was written by like Ted Peterson. Um, so the, a lot of the stuff I talked about with the Dawn era was written by Michael Kirkbride. A lot of the stuff I'm getting into now is written by Ted Peterson. Okay, um, cool. Because I'm like. <laughs> what do you mean they would recognize it? There are these games? I'm caught up. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, on the eight islands, the aliens construct the White Gold Tower. There's another oh. great tower of Tamriel. And it's, it's right there as it becomes the center of the Hold me back. <laughs> the Dwemer begin expanding westward in the Skyrim. So they construct uh, cities underneath the mountain range that separates Skyrim and Morrowind, also called the Velocity Mountains. They eventually expand all the way to High Rock and Hammerfell. Um, Hammerfell is a very specific uh, expansion date that we'll get to later, but right now all you need to know is they're in Skyrim and High Rock right now. And they're just tumbling. They're fucking. They're <laughs> they were called, the Dwemer are called dwarves because the giants of uh, who currently reside in Skyrim, we don't know too much about them, but the giants are like little people. You guys are dwarves. Um, Dwemer are not actually shorter than normal elves, they're just other elves. Uh, <laughs> yes. They fuck with the smell of yet? No, no. That comes after the magic juice. Oh shit. Um, so high velocity culture is fine it's like firm it's in its swing and red stain. Chimer practice ancestor worship. They begin to despise the secular culture of the Dwimmer because the Dwimmer are atheists who don't believe in their gods. <laughs> the, the Dwimmer believe in their gods, but they're like, we can we can achieve divinity through our own means. We don't need them, basically. They so right. they're snarky fucking atheists. And the Khmer are like, fuck you guys. So for centuries, there are minor raids and territorial disputes between the Dwimmer and the Khmer, which are sparked by these religious differences. 
Um, centuries later, high-velocity culture dissolves, and time is split into tribal groups, which eventually form into the great houses of Morrowind in the modern day. Um, there are some tribes who persist, called the Ashlander tribes, which, um, uh, I mean, that's, that's information that we'll get to later, but know that the great houses are forming from tribes, and some tribes are staying as just Ashlander nomadic tribes. Most of them are on Barton, though. The, um, the slowly, uh, the high elven wizard towers, which were built in Resdane, are just, they just get abandoned. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, the first wave of human civilization from Atmora begins now. Oh. They descend to Skyrim first and then migrate to northern Syria. So Atmora up here, which is uh, used to be called Altmora by the high elves, they had discovered it below before. They discovered it before and they remembered it as a land of like green and like spring and cool shit like that. Um, and, and, and that is what Alt Altmora used to be. Um, but they didn't fuck around there. They were like, we're too busy with Tamriel. We'll get back there later. But there's humans coming down from Atmora, which is a bastard name for it now. You know, it's sort of through the generations. The highest came, we called it Altmora. The humans were like, Atmora, am I saying it right? <laughs> you know? It's like when a kid figures out how to, how to say words. The hell you mean, at Altmora? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, they come down, they, they stay in Sand for a little bit, but really they go down to, to central Tamriel. Um, these human settlers are known as the Medes, and they later evolve into Imperials. Um, the second wave of human settlers from Atmora lands in Skyrim. Uh, they are led by Ysgrimor, who becomes the first human historian when he develops a runic language which translates Nordic speech based on Elvish principles. Um, and, and they're chilling in Skyrim right now. Ysgrimor's having fun. He's got all his homies with him. At this time, by the way, uh, humans lived as long as elves. Um, there is no, uh, so, so they're pretty long lived. Um, but basically, Yskrimor builds the city of Sarfall on Skyrim's northern tip. But he and his fellow settlers are driven away by the Falmer on the night of Tears, because the Falmer discover, hey, the Eye of Magnus is underneath this city that they just built. Are they trying to take, because Magnus, you know, created the world, are humans really trying to, like, take over that religious artifact? So the Falmer basically attacks Sarfell, completely sack it, completely drive the outlaws back. The snow elves messed up, bro. Yeah, they, they, could, well, they, they perceived it as a religious life on Ariel. Because remember, the Falmer are even more religious than the Altmer are. Uh, they are religious zealots in that sense. Ysgrimor returns later with his 500 companions from Atmora, and they start a short war between the Falmer and the Atmorans. The Falmer were led by the Snow Prince, an immensely talented warrior that could easily have driven men back. Like, all the other Snow Elves were basically like pussy religious scholars. They were getting cut down to the Atmorans. But the Snow Prince was fucking up the Atmorans. One day, though, the Snow Prince kills his female companion, and he sees her child crying over her dead body, and he can't bring himself to kill the child. So the child picks up his mother's sword and runs the Snow Prince through with it, and ending the war between the Falmer, which basically means the Falmer are driven on the ground, the Dwemer are like, hey guys, you can, you can come live with us. You know, I know you guys hated us because you like Ariel and all that stuff. But come live with us. And eventually the Falmer get uh, degenerated into a slave race by the Dwemer. And they are now the modern day, like, um, little goblin creatures that are in Dwemer ruins. They're completely blind. Yeah, completely blind. They were fed shrooms. They, they were basically, um, the, the Dwemer basically forced the Falmer to become entirely dependent on the Dwemer. Okay, so the Falmer exact opposite of what the psychedelic trees did. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, at this time, uh, fuck, we're getting into the anime bullshit. Okay. So, <laughs> at this time, there is a warrior. Daddy's like, woo, my time. <laughs> there is a warrior called Pelamal Whitestrake. He is said to be an immensely powerful warrior who carried the favor of the vines themselves. He had a set of armor and weapons called the Crusader's Relics, each of which were handcrafted and blessed by the divines. So my man Pelinor Whitestrake, he's going around and he begins conquering lands like all over Tamriel, usually mostly in modern day Syria. He begins conquering lands. He is known for making kingdoms only to abandon them so that he could continue wandering. Alexander <laughs> um, the Great. The, the legitimacy of this is up for debate, but that's basically what, what Pelinor Whitestrake's doing right now. The Nords begin dreaming up the realm of Sovngarde. Uh, it is said to be a divine realm created by Shor. Shor is what they call Lorcan. 
um, for his bravest children to rest in after they die. Their dreams make Sovngarde a reality. So basically all the cool war glories go to Sovngarde. Oh, like the war conflict that's like that. So Alduin, so, so this, 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 I know I've, I've been very kind of brief, but the world has existed for a long time at this point. And Alduin is basically like, okay, it's my time to end the world. Um, so, <laughs> so him and his dragons descend, they start in Skyrim, and they start just ending the world. But Alduin gets greedy, and he instead, he, he's, he's like, you know, instead of ending the world, I'm just going to make these Nords my bitches. They're going to be my slaves, basically, and I'm going to live here like a king. Um, so the Nords, they, they begin religiously worshiping the dragons, they dedicate temples to them, giving rise to the dragon priests and Mirak and, and people like that. I want to very quickly drive a very important distinction here right now. So, anyone can learn the Thum, or the Dragon Shell from Skyrim. Dragon tricks, uh, dr Skyrim tricks you into believing that only Dragonborn can do this. They, they're really good at it, but other people can learn how to shell. And Dragon, the Dragonborn DLC for Skyrim also tells you that Mirak is the first Dragonborn. This is a dirty fucking Howardian lie. Alessia, Saint Alessia, is the first dragonborn. She is the best. Fuck Mirak. Mirak is a usurper. He is not the first dragonborn. Fuck him. Because shout, shouting doesn't make you a dragonborn, asshole. To be fair, Mirak, it's completely in his character to be like, I am the first. <laughs> it is 100% in his character to call himself the first dragonborn, yes. I'll agree with that. But that is, a, that is a Howardian lie right there. He Literally, tried to convince you that Mirak is the first dragonborn. If you beat Alwyn before talking to him. I didn't get very far in any of these games. <laughs> What's a dragon shout? <laughs> you win. <laughs> well, Alwyn, that's actually coming up. That's actually coming up. So, <laughs> most of these Nords, so most of the Nords are not happy with their subjugation, so they begin rebelling against the dragons, resulting in thousands of deaths. Parthenax, um, which roughly translates into... Um, Mario. I think, I think Parthenax's name translates into, like, Warlord, Overlord, Tyrant, or no, something like that. Like, it's it's really like a Mario. Badass name. 